Hi folks, hope you are okay. So we've gone through a lot of information, a lot of verses. I tried to explain it and give you a one-on-one -on -one in a kind of academic study of how to debunk people like Bart Ehrman and any uh, scholars that come around and say that the church created the scripture. And I've given you abundance of evidence that this is nonsense. And the scholarship for, this video, for these videos comes from this. So I don't claim in this vid these videos to have done it all myself but it comes from this book The Heresy of Orthodoxy uh, by Andres J. Kostenberger and Michael J. Kruger uh, excellent book to get hold of published by Apollos so now we've come to more or less the end of our series and I just want to share a bit about church history in Clement's letter in 95 AD, he talks about Reed Paul. Even the scholar John Barton, who's more liberal, agrees that uh, this is the case. Didache quotes Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 13. Ignatius quotes Paul's letters, Matthew, Luke, and John. Polycarp gives over 100 references to the New Testament, quotes... Uh, many of uh, Paul's epistles uh, the epistle of Barnabas quotes Matthew Papius uh, talks about the gospels uh, there is an also an apocryphal sorry there is an epistle um, written by Ptolemy an epistle to Flora 150 and he talks about the New Testament then you have the Moratorium Fragment, which is 190 to 200 AD. You have Origins List, which is actually 200 AD. Um, so, most of the New Testament, within the first 150 years, well, within the first uh, eight, within the first 100 years, sorry, was quoted by the early church and used as scripture. All right. Um, so yeah, so there we are. Now I just want to again reiterate: when you go back to Athanasius' letter, letter where he writes uh, a list of twenty-seven books, he says we believe it's uh, scripture because scripture is divine. He says it, scripture is divine, and then it passed down for us from author from ancient sources. So again, he doesn't believe that community has created scripture, but the scriptures had inherent authority. It was recognized by the early church, which was passed down to him. He didn't say, this is the 27 that we're going to believe in. He only had to believe them because he could say inherently to the word of God, and he traced them back to the early church of the first century. So there we are. We finished. Sorry about that. I just feel, felt a, a bit of a wind in my tummy. And uh, we've done it really, we've looked at scripture, we've looked at Bauer's theory, we've looked at scripture, we've looked at uh, church history. Now, I just want to say there are anom anomalies, there are intellectual difficulties sometimes, so we have to be honest with that. There are sometimes uh, letters that were believed to be scripture that weren't scripture sometimes by one or two church fathers like Origen and uh, etc. But... What you need to realize is that so long as you understand that the bulk of the New Testament was already in play as scripture, it was all a scripture in the first century, but the bulk of it was already quoted by the church and used by the church in the documents that we have, like in, in um, Polycarp, etc., within the first 100 years. So you're going to not have all the information sometimes. It's going to be difficult sometimes because there are different areas. They didn't have the internet. Origen didn't have the internet. When he moved to Caesarea, he, was, he, he found that Christians were using books that he didn't know about. And so we have to remember that there was a very strong Orthodox community around the world sharing scripture. For example, uh, there is... In most manuscripts, ancient manuscripts, a special attention made when it comes to saying Jesus is Lord 
in nearly every ancient manuscript it, 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 there is a special kind of writing that shows that they saw Christ as important as Lord that's in many nearly all the ancient manuscripts it shows you there was a uniformity of orthodoxy through when you look at the ancient manuscripts okay also the early church moved to codex which means a book form which shows you that they already knew what books they should be okay so but there are going to be anomaly, anomalies there are going to be difficulties but it doesn't destroy the basic solid foundation that we've given you that I've given you today okay once you have that foundation you can deal with these difficult anomalies sometimes where where well origin is quoted to other books he says that scripture yeah but wait a minute we know for a fact that the vast majority of the new testament was used as scripture so it's obvious that he he was a human being and he wasn't perfect but that's not a uniform belief that that the whole church believed him okay and there are reasons why there were difficulties sometimes for example the book of revelation was seen early on as scripture was used as scripture but the early church uh, coming into the second century uh, struggled a little bit because a lot of heretics were using the book of revelation and they were thinking well what's going on here and so it led to uh, debates about is it scripture or not but it was already accepted in the first century so there are little anomalies like that, but it doesn't undermine the basic foundation and structure of the argument that we've given you, that I've given you from, from this book concerning the formation of the canon, that, that God's word is inherently inspired, that Bauer's theory fails in, in that there was an orthodoxy which was shown from scripture that God called his leaders, Jesus called his leaders, that there was creeds, there were form, uh, catechism formulas, that there was a reference to scripture, etc. in the first century of the early church. And that the church history backs this up in Polycarp, Ignatius, and then later on in the second century, Irenaeus and Tertullian, etc. So that's it really, we've come to the end. Uh, the only thing I would say is be discerning. Just because people say things, just because people come along and they get a bit of fame and notoriety, don't just listen to them because of that. Go to your Bible, read your Bible, study your Bible, and study really good, solid material. And when you're going about street preaching or evangelism, be accountable. Have a group of people that you know that they can correct you, principally your church, principally your pastor, uh, but other Christians or the group of Christians that you work with, be accountable, read solid material, and you'll be on good tracks. But if you're not accountable to anybody, if you're not reading good solid material, then you'll make massive blunders if you, if you start doing apologetics on the streets, street preaching on the streets. You're going to cause a lot of problems rather than solve problems because you're not really grounded you're not really accountable and you'll get yourself in a mess. So God bless you. Love to everybody out there. And I hope that this series was a help to you and a blessing to you. God bless. Over and out.